Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the real United States, and welcome to the Smithsonian Institution's Museum of Natural History's Butterfly Exhibit. Now, I was not able to attend this one. Beverly was shooting solo on this one, and she's here with us today to help us do a voiceover. This isn't something we normally do, but the ambient noise in this particular facility was so bad that it was, there was really no way to use the open mic, and since she was alone, we couldn't do a presentation in real time. So we're going to try and, and tell you a little bit about what's here. Now you're going to notice this big blue butterfly flying around here. Bev, you want to tell us this, what this is? It's called a common morpho, and it's from Central and South America. And I really, really wanted to see this butterfly. It, it uh, captured my attention when I looked at the chart of butterflies that might be in there. And it was the first one I saw when I walked in, and they've got several of them in there. They're just beautiful to watch. You notice it's, it's camouflaged on the outside. It's got this brown with the big spots on the outside of the wings, and then when it opens its wings on the back are this bright blue. And Beverly was pretty excited about this, so that's why there's a, a lot of motion in the video more than what you normally see in our videos. There's the common morpho again. And you notice they've put out some pieces of cantaloupe and some pineapple. Apparently some of the species of butterflies, as adults, do, do eat, and they put this out there for them as food. As some of you may know, here's another species that, that Bev captured. Uh, some species of adult butterflies do not eat. They eat during their um, larval stage when they're a caterpillar and don't eat, but apparently some of these do, so they've got some food out there for them. And you see the butterflies are just kind of flying around, just flying around everybody. Yeah, they're flying around everybody. They didn't um, seem to be afraid of us when we walked in. They interacted with us quite a bit. Some of them landed on some of the people and they seem to be checking us out as much or more than we were checking them out. It was really nice that they didn't disappear into the plants when we walked in. <laughs> now, I, I was saying to Bev that I, I think it would cause me a great deal of stress to work in this environment because I'd be so worried about somebody molesting the butterflies because they're very, very delicate and if you touch them, the, the scales come off their wings. And there's that, that common morpho again with the big blue on the inside and see how brown it is on the outside. Well, um, anyway, they have a, a person in there, a staff member, who uh, does a, a little explanation demonstration about the frailty of the scales on the wings of the butterfly and why you, you can't really touch them or it'll damage them. And she was uh, showing that here a little later on. We'll, we'll show you that. There are... I think hundreds of species of plants in here. Yeah, and you'll see butterflies sitting on the ledge, and when you see those, um, the lady that was in there helping said that that's where they go to sleep. Oh, okay. It must be because it's the, the concrete collects a lot of heat and they like to stay, stay warm. Uh. Yeah, it must be because that's where it's warm for them to sleep and it's a stable um, place for them to sleep. It's not like, you know, on a bush that's moving around. Here on this right here? Yes. See them down on the ledge here, okay. And you were telling me about the, the environment in here, Beth? The environment, they keep it around 90 degrees with about 90% humidity. They've got misters that go off on timers to keep things real moist in there. Because of the heat and everything, they keep it real moist, and it's a very nice environment they've created for the butterflies. Now these misters, when they go off, because I, I got to hear the uh, the ambient open mic, are are pretty loud. It's a it's a disconcerting noise. It's a it's just loud, almost explosive kind of hiss that goes off, and until you realize what it is, it's a little disconcerting. Yeah, when they went off, it scared a couple of the little kids that were in the group of people that I was in with. They only let a group of about 10 people in at a time because the area isn't really that large and they don't want anybody accidentally stepping on the butterflies because they do go down to the floor and land as well. And another thing is when you go to go out, that you go into a, a special enclosed room when you go out that's got a big mirrored wall on it and they have another 
person there that helps you, checks you out for butterflies so that they make sure that you don't accidentally take any out with you. And you said they, they let you be in there for like 15 minutes? About 15 minutes, yeah, it's it's a time thing. Now here, there, as I was telling you, they were explaining to this young lady, this is the uh, staff member, about the, the scales, and this is a picture of a 1,000 times magnification of the scales that are on a butterfly's wings. And she's explaining to this, this girl that uh, you, they're very delicate and if you touch them, they come off on your fingers and that's why people shouldn't be, you know, touching the butterflies, it's uh, the sea. You see here off uh, in the uh, right-hand corner that there's some chrysalis here. These are display pieces of how the uh, butterflies go ahead and transform from a caterpillar to a butterfly in these chrysalis. Now there are some displays also explaining about the difference between a butterfly and a moth, but the the physiological differences between them and their life cycle differences are. Now uh, the admission to the museum is free of course at all the Smithsonian institutions and they have like 19 buildings but there is a fee to get into the butterfly exhibit runs about six dollars US at this time so if you want to go in and see this there there is a fee for this particular exhibit hey but they give a senior discount <laughs> yes they do <laughs> and they're, the butterflies are so bright and colorful. Um, a lot of it came out quite clear on the video. I was surprised when I watched the video back that the colors of the butterflies really did show up. You know what I'm impressed with is that we have a, a number of cameras. We have our, our main big Sony camera, but this is one of our original older smaller cameras and it, it came out quite clear. We're shooting this in uh, uh, 30 FPS. And it came out quite nice. I suppose it would have been nicer if we could have shot in 60 FPS since the, the wings move very, very fast, but all in all, I thought it turned out fairly well. Now, the interesting thing about doing a voiceover is eventually you, you, you just want to allow you to see this and you run out of things to say because it's, you know we're not entomologists, but they do give you a, um, did they give this to you? No, you no, printed this out. I in printed advance. this out from the computer. Okay. We'll, we'll put the the website on where you can get the chart that describes and shows pictures of the different butterfly species that they have in the exhibit. Um, not all of them are there at the same time, so I printed out this chart and taken it with me. It's also on the wall when you walk in, but. I was too amazed at watching the butterflies to go check out the chart on the wall. Now you say they're not all there at all the time, that there's different they ones did. there? They have different lifespans at different times. Oh, okay, because I was going to ask where do, they, where do they go when they're not there, but okay, they, they perish and, and, and lay eggs and, yeah, okay, I get it. I was wondering if they, and there's a yeah. monarch butterfly. This is a migratory butterfly common here in North America. It uh, travels from between summer and winter several thousand miles from north to south in its migration. Certainly if, you, uh, if you're watching this overseas and you have a migratory species of butterfly that uh, maybe we're not aware of, I'd certainly like to hear about that because the, the monarchs are something that have always fascinated Beverly and I because of these long, long distances that they, they travel. This very delicate little creature that can fly, you know, several thousand miles uh, twice a year to, uh, to migrate. I always thought it was fascinating. Yeah, and they've got, um, in this thing, they've got giant silk moths and this, what I caught on camera really doesn't depict, you can't really tell the size of this moth, but it's, it looks a lot bigger than that in real life. It was just huge. That is, that is, that is a ginormous moth. <laughs> Certainly this is not a place to, to hang out if you have any kind of bug phobia, or maybe it is because it's, there's so many of them it would desensitize you, but uh, that's, a, that's a lot of butterflies in there. Yeah, there are a lot of butterflies in there. There's a beautiful shot there. there, isn't it? Yeah, that's called, I don't know what that's called. I have to 
I have yeah. to look that one up. But yeah, I got some I got some close up ones of some of them. After I was in there for about ten minutes I kinda calmed down. I wasn't quite all over the place so much, but then again, you take a camera and try and follow a butterfly around. It's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> this is actually our second butterfly video. We did one about two years ago. Yeah. Uh, of one in our yard up in Michigan, the uh, giant swallowtail, I think it was. And uh, yeah, following a butterfly with a camera, especially if you're zoomed in, is, is challenging. Because <laughs> they don't fly in a nice straight path. They, they're kind of all over the place. It was it was really hard to uh, keep the butterflies in, but I really enjoyed it, and I would go back and see it again. Yeah, I'm hoping to get down and see this myself. So, so I hope you've enjoyed this visit to the Smithsonian Institution's Museum of Natural History and the butterfly exhibit therein. And we hope that if you haven't already, that you'll pick subscribe and come along for the adventure. We love having everybody with us. If you got questions or comments, please leave in the comments section below. We try to get back to everybody we possibly can. And as always, thank you for watching.